Hi, I'm Jeremy Summit, a research fellow here at the CIS. We know that rapidly rising health costs are putting pressure on government budgets and that the increasing cost of Medicare will be unsustainable in the long term. Proposed solutions vary. Some argue that we should feed the beast of ever-growing government spending by raising taxes. Others maintain that we should focus on boosting national productivity. By increasing national income, we can increase the tax take and fund increased government outlays in health in a less painful manner. I believe that productivity is the key to solving the looming fiscal crisis facing the health system, but I don't think we should cream off larger amounts of national income to pay for inefficient health services. How to get more health services for our health dollars is the subject of a new CIS report by Professor Peter Phelan and me, which focuses on public hospital productivity and how to increase it. In the last decade, spending on public hospitals has increased by over 77% in real terms, more than twice as fast as growth in national income. Numerous studies have also found that productivity is lower in public hospitals compared to private hospitals. This means we aren't getting the bang, the right amount of services, for our health bucks. The way to contain health costs is to outsource the delivery of public hospital services to more efficient private operators. However, privatisation is controversial with regards to health services and politicians are reluctant to act. These political problems can be sidestepped by emulating reforms undertaken in Britain. National Health Service Hospitals in England are run by statutory corporations known as Foundation Trusts. Each trust is independently managed and because trusts are genuinely accountable for their budgets and finances, there are greater incentives for more efficient management. Adapting the trust model to the Australian health system would remove a lot of the factors that currently impede performance in our highly bureaucratic and centralised public hospital system. Most importantly, placing public hospitals under the control of trusts would mimic some of the key factors that international studies show account for superior hospital management and performance, which include more competitive operating environments. Basically, the trust model would create a more competitive public hospital system by allowing state health departments to purchase more services from the most efficient hospitals, saving taxpayers money and enabling the community to receive more services for less health funding. However, public hospital reform needs to go further. Trusts in England have only achieved modest cost reductions because not enough has been done to stimulate competition and allow private providers to deliver hospital care. There is no dodging the P word. We need to privatise some public hospitals, which would encourage trust hospitals to imitate the best practice, business-like methods of private competitors. Public hospitals are the most costly single component of public health services, and something clearly needs to be done to contain their costs and increase their outputs. The microeconomic reform agenda set out in our report is a politically viable way for policymakers to control ever-escalating health expenditure and improve the sustainability of the health system in an ageing Australia. Thanks for watching. To read the full report, go to cis.org.au.